Today we're going to talk about the most overlooked medical intervention after 50. It doesn't require a prescription, right? There's no side effects. Very few doctors prescribe it. And it literally is the one habit that protects your metabolism, your bones, your brain and balance, and how to make it stick. So if that sounds interesting, stick around, literally. I'm Dr. Lori Marvis. I'm a board certified family and lifestyle medicine uh, physician. And I'm so excited to share with you today the one thing that I think can help so many things. If you have chronic disease of any kind, doing this will help. Now, let's play a quick game, right? So imagine two women, right? They're the same age, they're the same weight, same healthy diet. One lifts weights twice a week. The other walks, but avoids anything that feels eh, too intense. Now, fast forward 10 years. One still walks, the other walks with a cane. Which is which? Most people would guess wrong because the real danger as we age isn't gaining fat per se, it's the losing muscle. The, this invisible erosion is what we call sarcopenia. And it starts as early as your 30s. And by 70, you can lose up to 50% of your muscle mass if you don't fight back. But here's a twist no one talks about. Muscle is not just for movement. It's a metabolic organ, a hormone factory, a sugar sponge, and your number one defense against frailty. And the way to build it, you pick things up and you put them down on purpose. That, my friend, is resistance training. Now, let's talk about the hidden tax of inactivity. Every decade after 30, you naturally lose that 3 to 8% of your muscle mass unless you strength train. You won't notice it at first. You'll just think, whew, these stairs feel a little bit steeper. Hmm, I can't open jars as easily. Huh, I get tired of carrying these groceries. But when you're really, what you're really losing is not just convenience, it's cellular horsepower. Now, muscle is where your mitochondria live the energy factories in your cells. Less muscle means less, means fewer and less mitochondria, which means again, less energy and slower metabolism. And worse, with less muscle, your insulin sensitivity drops. That means your blood sugar rises more easily, leads to prediabetes, belly fat, and brain fog. In short, if you don't use it, you will lose it. But if you train it, you keep it and everything else that matters. So why don't more people over 50 do resistance training? Well, because we've been told a myth that cardio is king and lifting weights is for the young, the ripped, or the vain. Now here's the truth. Resistance training improves your bone density, helping prevent fractures. It reduces visceral fat, that dangerous fat that lives around your organs. It boosts brain health. It reduces depression and improving cognition. It preserves independence, the ability to get off the floor or carry a suitcase or play with grandkids. And here's the kicker. You don't need to spend hours in the gym. Two 30 to 45 minute sessions per week can change the trajectory of your aging. So what happens inside your body when you strength train? Well, think of your muscles as your Wi-Fi routers, right? Most people think lifting weights just builds biceps, but it does something far more important. It upgrades your body's entire operating system. When you train them, you increase the strength and the signal of your entire metabolic network. So here's what's actually happening. Number one, your muscle fibers break down slightly during exercise. Step two, your body repairs and rebuilds them. Now this repair process stimulates mitochondrial growth, making your cells more energetic. Next, it improves your glucose uptake, acting like a sponge for excess sugar. And finally, it releases myokines. These are anti-inflammatory compounds that support immunity, mood, and even brain plasticity. And it's not just about looking good, it's about functioning better at every level. So what is the minimum effective dose of what you actually need? So let's forget bodybuilding. Here's what matters after age 50. Frequency, two to three times per week, ideally three. Exercises, focus on compound movements like squats, push-ups, rows, deadlifts. How many reps? Eight to 12 reps per set, two to three sets. Load, it should feel challenging but safe. You can use dumbbells, resistance bands, or your own body weight. Your goal isn't to chase PRs, right? It's to build functional strength, the kind that helps you get up off the floor, lift your grandchild, or carry heavy groceries without a strain. And if you've never lifted before, you're the perfect candidate because beginners, you get the biggest benefits and fast. So how much protein do you need after age 50? 
So as strength training is a signal, your protein is a supply chain. And without it, your body can't rebuild what you've worked to break down. So here the part, here's the part that really surprises most people. As you age, your body becomes less efficient at using protein to build muscle. And that means you actually need a little bit more, not less, to maintain and grow lean mass. So step one is calculate your ideal body weight. To figure out your protein needs, you'll first need to estimate your ideal body weight. And that weight supports a healthy body composition, not necessarily your current weight. There's a simple method that you can use. And for women, you can start with 100 pounds or 45.4 kilos for the first five feet of height. And then add five pounds or 2.2 kilos uh, for every inch uh, or 2.54 centimeters over five foot. So for example, if a woman is five foot four and you would want to think around in that first uh, five foot is 100 pounds, you add five pounds for each inch after that, that's 20, so around 120 pounds. Again, this is just a, a rough estimate. And for men, start at 106 pounds for the first five feet and then add six pounds for every inch over five foot. By the way, there is a link to the Substack article that has this all written out for you along with the worksheet that will help you further explain exactly what I'm telling you to do. That link is below, but let's keep going. Remember, the goal here, it don't have to be exact, just a ballpark figure to get you started on your protein intake. Step two is use the protein formula. So you wanna aim for about 1.2 to 1.6 grams of protein per kilo for your ideal body weight per day. Um, or that's around 0 0.55 to 0 0.73 grams per pound of ideal body weight. So for example, if your ideal body weight is 140 pounds, you need about 77 to 102 grams of protein per day. Now you wanna split that evenly across meals to maximize muscle repair and strength gains. So three simple guidelines, spread it out, don't dump it all at dinner, your body benefits most from 25 to 30 grams per meal, spreading out over about three eating windows. Two, prioritize your post-workout protein, getting 20 to 40 grams of protein within one to two hours after lifting to enhance muscle repair. And three, use what works. Whole foods or protein shakes both count, right? Use what's convenient, digestible, and sustainable for you. If you have kidney issues or a medical condition, absolutely talk to your doctor first. Now, if you're already lifting, also, here's how to know what's working, right? So if you're already doing resistance training, fantastic. You skip the hardest part, which is just beginning, right? And now comes the second hardest part, knowing if what you're doing is enough. So here's the truth. Just showing up isn't always the same as leveling up. So you might feel strong, but the question is, are you progressing? So there are five signs for resistance training is actually working. One, you're increasing resistance over time, right? Whether that's more weight, more reps, or better control, progress means progressive overload. So if your workouts look the same every week, your results will too, right? Two, you're feeling stronger in your daily life. You can carry groceries with ease, right? Can you stand up from the floor without using your hands? These are gold standard indicators of functional strength. Uh, three, you're not just sore, you're more stable. Right, soreness will fade, but what matters is that you have joint integrity, better balance, and fewer aches with daily movement. That's when you know you're building real resilience. Four, your body composition is improving. Your weight may not change, but your muscle mass and strength to weight ratio should. So think less about the scale, more about how your clothes fit and how you move. Five, you recover well and look forward to your workouts. Too much fatigue and dread mean that you're way overdoing it or under recovering. A good program leaves you energized, not exhausted. So here's a rule of twos. It's a really simple progress check. Every two weeks, ask yourself, am I adding a little more resistance or reps? Am I doing something that I felt harder last month with more ease? If the answer is no for two straight check-ins and your body has adapted and it's time to nudge that dial up a little bit. You don't need to lift heavier every week. You just need to challenge your muscles regularly to keep the benefits flowing. So really it's a quick reality check. What if you do nothing? The average 70 year old has less leg strength than a 30 year old sedentary adult. Yeah, you heard me. The average 70 year old has less leg strength than a 30 year old sedentary adult. That's not just trivia. It's why falls are the leading cause of injury related death in people over 65. But in just 12 weeks of resistance training, Older adults can rebuild lost muscle, improve insulin sensitivity, and reverse early stages of frailty. So what if you have issues like arthritis or bad back or just not the gym type? Perfectly. Those are exactly who need resistance training the most. 
right? Because it strengthens the muscles around joints, reducing pain. It improves posture and spine alignment, easing your back stress. It can be done at home with middle or no equipment. So in fact, studies show that supervised resistance training can reduce arthritis pain better than medications with none of the side effects. So of course, speak to your doctor before starting any new exercise regimen and preferably ask him for a physical therapy referral to create a resistance training perfectly suited for you and your needs. So again, if you're ready to train smarter and you need a little help, click the link below. This will take you to the Substack, to the article of everything I just mentioned, and you'll also get a worksheet really talks to you about how to build this. If you're a beginner, if you're already kind of intermediate stage, I'll walk you through all the protein and the calculations, easy to print out and to follow. So I hope to see you there.